Hello again, friends, and welcome into Gamecock Central Radio. Emerson Phillips joined by Gamecock legend Kip Balknight. Kip played for the Gamecocks from 98 to 2001, and during the 2000 season, he won several National Player of the Year awards, including the prestigious Golden Spikes Award, and he's now color commentator for the SEC Network. Kip, the Gamecocks took two out of three at home against Missouri this weekend. It's South Carolina's fourth consecutive SEC series win. Gamecocks playing well in the second half. They put themselves in fifth place overall in the SEC, and we are now down to the final weekend of the regular season. South Carolina's midweek game against USC Upstate rained out in Columbia. That game scheduled for Tuesday, but uh, canceled. Due to the weather, so South Carolina now prepares to head to Texas A&M for the final series of the regular season. And then the SEC tournament is coming up, Kip. So four straight conference series wins for the Gamecocks. Yeah, the Gamecocks are certainly playing great baseball right now. And really uh, a a well-played game and a well-played weekend for both teams. And South Carolina, fortunately, getting a big home run from Carlos Cortez on Sunday to cap it off and... Uh, walk-off fashion as well. But, you know, South Carolina still has a ton to play for, in my opinion. I, I still think that if they can go to Texas A&M this weekend and take care of business and at least win the series, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, they could get to the SEC tournament and get hot and play deep into that tournament. And depending on what all happens with the rest of the, the teams across the country, you know, they could really mix themselves into possibly a number two seed, and I, I still think optimistically maybe even host. Um, but the non-conference losses I do think is, is going to hurt them in the end. Hmm. I do believe they're definitely in the tournament, uh, the NCAA tournament that is. But I still think they have a ton to play for. So I don't think this team is uh, – they've been down – many times, or I should say knocked down many times this year. So they'll still play hungry, and they got to play well. Texas a and a great ball club and a team that uh, has been reeling here of late, but uh, certainly a, a, a tough place to play, and they need to play their best to win this weekend. Missouri was in town this past weekend. They beat the Gamecocks 5-3 to three in Game 1 on Friday, but then on Saturday, Junior Adam Hill struck out eight and seven innings of work. The Gamecocks scored a pair of runs in three separate innings and a 6-3 to three win over the Tigers. Saturday was senior day at Founders Park, and the Gamecocks, with the win, clinched a berth in the SEC baseball tournament. And then on Sunday, Kip, a great outing from Cody Morris, who kind of struggled a little bit in the first inning, but settled down and pitched probably the best game of his career. Seven innings of shutout ball. The two teams combined for just five hits apiece. It was a true pitcher's duel. And in the bottom of the ninth, scoreless ball game, Carlos Cortez parked the first pitch that he saw over the right field fence for a one to nothing South Carolina win. And Kip, I enjoyed your call on the SEC Network this weekend. You and Bert Chantley worked that game on TV, and I believe you said, "You hang him, we bang him." Yeah, you, you got that right. We uh, you hang him, we'll bang it. And I think Cortez was sitting breaking ball there. Say, their starting pitcher was outstanding. And speaking of starting pitching, South Carolina starting pitching, as you mentioned, even on Friday, Logan Chapman really was outstanding. And, you know, some would say probably and maybe could, certainly could have stayed in the game. And, uh, you know, he came out having not even given up a run. And unfortunately for Logan Chapman and the Gamecocks, Eddie Demurius came in and and struggled really uh, for the first time in a while. Eddie Demurius did bounce back on Sunday and pitched really well in relief of Cody Morris, but starting pitching outstanding this weekend for the Gamecocks. And again, a big series win. And, you know, the Gamecocks get knocked down on, on Wednesday night against Kyle Charleston, lose another tough one on Friday, but then showed their resiliency coming back and winning two out of three against Missouri, a team that they definitely should have won the series against. And they, they took care of business and, it's all right in front of them. South Carolina still just has to play it one game at a time. You hear that cliche a lot, but this is a team that I think if they can continue hitting well, there's not going to be many teams that are going to want to see South Carolina in their regional. This is a team that certainly has some senior leaders and guys that have stepped up, and the tough part is not having T.J. Hopkins not knowing his status for the Texas A&M series. I know he was out all weekend this past weekend against Missouri, and 
he's certainly essential to that lineup. He is great in center field and certainly been a great hitter since coming back. I think he was hitting either over 400 or really close to it. Uh, since he came back from injury, and that'll be tough if they don't have him. Yeah, the Gamecocks are a different ball club with T.J. Hopkins in the lineup. So on Sunday, Cody Morris tied a career high with 10 strikeouts, career best, seven innings of work, and the one to nothing Carolina win on the walk-off home run by Carlos Cortez. And Morris was named SEC Pitcher of the Week on Monday of this week. He becomes the second Gamecock to win SEC Pitcher of the Week honors, joining Adam Hill. Back on February 26th, and Logan Chapman earned SEC Co-Freshman of the Week on April 23rd. So, weekly SEC honors for Cody Morris, and the Gamecocks are now 30-21 and 21 on the year, 15-12 and 12 in league play. Kip Carolina started 1-5 and five in the SEC. They're now 15-12. and 12. They're in fifth place in the overall SEC standings right now. And it's important to remember that the top two finishers in each division in the final SEC standings get buys at the SEC tournament. So, Carolina's in fifth right now. They're in third in the East behind Florida and Georgia. Gamecocks trail Georgia by one game in the SEC East standing. So Carolina can still you know, conceivably get into the top four, the top two in the East, but they're going to have to play well at Texas A&M this weekend, and they're going to need some help. Georgia is hosting Arkansas, which is the sixth-ranked team in the country, and Arkansas the leader in the SEC West right now. So that's a tough series for Georgia, uh, and it would be nice for the Gamecocks to get that by in Hoover, Kip. But the bottom line here is that South Carolina, uh, I think the consensus right now is that Carolina is firmly on the two-seed line for the NCAA tournament. You know, The Gamecocks are probably going to be a two-seed based on how things are right now. But we still got three regular season games. We got the full SEC tournament. And the Gamecocks could improve on that position, or they could certainly get worse, you know, depending on how things go over these last couple of weeks of the season here, Kip. So A&M becomes the focus this weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. It'll be 730 on Thursday, 7.30 first pitch on Friday, and then Saturday at 3 p.m. at Bluebell Field, SEC Network Plus covering all three games. So, Kip, you mentioned Texas A&M you know, struggling a little bit late in the season here. They have lost five of their last six SEC games. They were just swept three at Arkansas. It was Arkansas's fourth SEC sweep of the season. Arkansas picked up its 30th home win. That's uh, the most ever by an Arkansas Razorback team during the regular season. So Arkansas, we know, is having a fantastic year. And the weekend prior, Kip, Texas A&M dropped two out of three at home to the Florida Gators, which are ranked number one in the nation. Yeah, I mean, I think we've, we've seen it. I mean, Florida, Arkansas, Georgia, I mean, really, really good ball clubs this year. And South Carolina, when they were struggling, you know, there for a while uh, with a lot of their players out injured, three of their top four hitters in the lineup, you know, they, they did a great job at Arkansas at least winning a game. You know, they came out of there winning, I think it was on a Thursday night, Logan Chapman pitched really well, and I think they ended up winning maybe two two to one or three to two. Carlos Cortez, I believe, hit a two-run homer about the fifth or sixth inning that was huge for South Carolina. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a tough league. It'll beat you up. And, I mean, normally if you can be 15 and 15 in the league, you're probably going to make the postseason. I don't think South Carolina wants to be that, though. I think they have a chance to go in and try to win some games this weekend and really solidify themselves as a lot to get in the tournament, whether that be a two-seed playing on the road somewhere or even a three-seed. But I think that, you know, it's important for South Carolina. I mean, this, the job that this coaching staff has done this year, in my opinion, is just amazing. I mean, especially with the injuries they've had. And and while I'm giving credit to the coaching staff, I, at the end of the day, the players still have to make plays. And these players have truly responded. And, you know, I think it's just a testament to the leadership from the top down. You know, Mark Kingston all the way down. They've done a wonderful job. Skylar Meade's done a great job with the pitching staff, not taxing guys and really doing a good job of, protecting some of the freshmen and getting them out of there at appropriate times. And it's uh, it's certainly been a total team effort. I mean, if you'd asked me five, six weeks ago, I know I would have been optimistic. I always am an optimistic guy. And I, I told Carolina fans that I talk to all the time that I still do believe this team can make the tournament. And a lot of people just laughed at me. And, and I could have been wrong, but uh, it looks like I may be right. I certainly feel like I will be. And uh, I think it's just a testament to these players and their character and 
Uh, they've been through a lot of tough times, a tough time, especially, you know, a new coach in town. Um, I'm sure they were probably at times maybe doubting some of the things they were hearing only because they were struggling so much. Any athlete is going to go through that, uh, you know, those situations and have those feelings. And those are all normal, natural, you know, feelings that us human beings have. And I think, it, you know, they just, uh, they persevered and, uh, they, you know, they've, um, they've, they've really, really done well down the stretch. Hopefully they'll have a good weekend starting on Thursday at Texas A&M and, Hopefully they can make a run in the postseason. Kip, the Gamecocks started one and five in league play. They're fifteen and twelve right now, so fourteen and seven in the SEC since the first two series of the year. A and M started sixteen and one this season, but they dropped their first three SEC series, and they've still been nationally ranked. You know, they were ranked eighteenth in the country going into that Arkansas series this past weekend. Got swept by Arkansas. So, talk about A and M. Feeling a sense of urgency this weekend, Kip. You know, I feel like this is going to be a tough series for South Carolina because A and M will be playing at home. A uh, and M scheduled to play Sam Houston State on Tuesday night this week, as we record here on Tuesday. Carolina's midweek game, the Tuesday night game against USC Upstate, canceled due to weather in Columbia. So the Gamecocks travel to A and M for this Thursday through Saturday series, and you know, I feel like A and M. Is really feeling a sense of urgency this weekend, Kip. They're three games under 500 in the league. You know they're they're going to make the NCAA tournament, but if they can get back to 500 or better in conference play, you know they could still host a regional. So I feel like A and M really needs this series this weekend to improve their position. Gamecocks need it too. Don't get me wrong, but I think uh, you know it's a tall order for South Carolina headed all the way you know, halfway across the country this weekend. Yeah, it is, and you know I think that's part of what made this past weekend against Missouri a tough series. You know, Missouri definitely at the bottom of the barrel in the SEC, but they were still fighting for a chance to get into the SEC tournament, and they're still fighting for that, and that was a big win for them Friday night. Um, so it, it certainly wasn't a weekend where they were just kind of folding it and letting South Carolina win. South Carolina has to play. I mean, we've seen this team. We know South Carolina has to play good baseball no matter who they play, and that's certainly not a shot at the team. That's just – it is what it is. I mean, I, I can remember saying the same thing. You know, there's so much parity in college baseball. I mean, even back in 2010, 2011, when we won national championships, they couldn't just put the line. You know, Coach Tanner and Coach Holbrook, who was on the staff as well, couldn't just post the lineup and say, all right, guys, here we go, let's go play. We're going to be good enough to beat whoever we play. They still had to play good baseball to win any SEC series. So there's just a lot of parity in college baseball, and it is going to be a, a weekend where they're certainly fighting uh, just as much as South Carolina, but I, I like my chances with my Gamecock boys. I think they're going to do great this weekend, and I certainly predict another SEC series win. The Gamecocks with plenty to play for as well at 15 and 12 in the league. You talked about the fact that some of these midweek losses that the Gamecocks have suffered this year, you know, they're currently hurting Carolina's RPI, but the Gamecocks can still, I think it's possible, you know, host a regional depending on how they play at A&M and how they do in Hoover. You know, if the Gamecocks continue to play well and win ball games, I think they could still host a regional. So that's got to be the goal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they certainly need to, you know, try to do that and uh, try to go out and play well. And, you know, they can't make those decisions, obviously. And if they fall short of it and they play really well, you know, here this weekend at Texas A&M and in the SEC tournament, the only reason they won't, you know, host will just be because, you know, you look back at this season and, you know, the Furman loss, the Presbyterian loss. I think there was a loss to VMI, Charleston Southern. Obviously, caused a Charleston a good ball club. But, you know, that's four wins, those first four I named. that They should normally win those games. If they win those games, they're in the top 15. And we're looking at South Carolina having every chance, uh, a really good chance to be hosting a regional this, this week, uh, you know, this year. So, still been a, a good, solid year. I think a great year for the first year in Mark Kingston era. SEC standings, Florida 20 and 7, Georgia 16 and 11, South Carolina 15 and 12, Kentucky and Vanderbilt are 13 and 14, Tennessee is 11 and 16, Missouri is 10 and 17, and over in the West, Arkansas 17 and 10, coming off the sweep of Texas A&M, Ole Miss 16 and 11, LSU 14 and 13, Auburn is 13 and 14, Texas A&M 12 and 15, 
Mississippi State also 12 and 15, and Alabama bringing up the rear in the Southeastern Conference at 7 and 20. This weekend's action, final weekend of play in the SEC regular season. Florida's at Mississippi State. Gamecocks are at A&M. Kentucky's at Vandy. Tennessee's at Missouri. Arkansas's at Georgia. Ole Miss is at Alabama, and LSU is at Auburn. So a lot of action and places in the standing still on the line this weekend as we head into the final weekend of the SEC regular season. Kip, it's getting to be that fun time of year. You know, games are really starting to mean more. And when we head to Hoover, uh, that'll certainly be the case. Uh, teams trying to, you know, position themselves to host a regional and in some cases playing for a top eight national seed. So it's a fun time of year for college baseball. It's a great time. This is the best time of the year for college baseball. And especially when you're rooting for a team in the Southeastern Conference, it's a, rock, a lot of ton of really good baseball clubs and Again, South Carolina has to continue to just try to play it one game at a time. And, uh, you know, I really think it was a positive sign seeing Adam Hill and Cody Morris step up. If they can be consistent down the stretch, I think that's going to be a huge plus for South Carolina. I mean, you're talking about two guys that are capable of winning, you know, an SEC pitcher of the week every type, every single start that they go out. They just have got to try to be more consistent in the strike zone, and if they can do that, if South Carolina's bats hit the way they can, it's going to be a tough team in playoff time. Kip, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Go Gamecock. That's Kip Balknight, color analyst for the SEC Network and Gamecock legend, and I'm Emerson Phillips, and this is Gamecock Central Radio. We'll come back next week. We will recap the A&M series, and we will preview the SEC baseball tournament here on Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks for joining us.